How's it going everybody? Welcome back. Um, just had some comments to make here on an article I just read from Dual Shockers. Um, Dual Shockers is a site that I, I, I've always felt like they have a Sony slant to them, uh, PlayStation bias. However, they've always seemed to report fairly accurately and fairly, even on you know the competition for Sony like Xbox. However, today I found an article that said Xbox Game Pass has half subscribers of PlayStation Plus, despite its offerings. This article was by, and forgive me, I'm going to butcher the name, MD Armughanudin. So, anyways, I will be linking the article in the comment or description below, but let's get into this. It says, Xbox Game Pass might offer a lot to subscribers but it is still halfway as popular as PlayStation Plus, according to a recent report. He goes on to cite uh, Zuby Tech on Twitter, who posted uh, some charts that show some of the largest gaming subscription services uh, by subscriber count, with PS Now once merged, second image. So what he shows here is a comparison of gaming subscriptions and other media subscriptions such as Netflix, Hulu, Paramount Plus, and then he shows of course Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, and PlayStation Now. Um, now he goes on to say, the writer of the article, on paper the Xbox Game Pass seems much more valuable from the subscriber's standpoint considering that you get all Xbox first party games on day one, which is something the PlayStation Plus doesn't feature. It is indeed a quite a good buy, not only for Xbox owners, but PC players as well. And while Xbox might look very lucrative on paper, the numbers say a totally different thing altogether. Uh, he goes on to show how uh, PlayStation Plus, or excuse me, Game Pass has about 25 million subscribers. And the PlayStation Plus, on the other hand, has around 48 million subscribers. And then they, of course, are rolling PlayStation Now into that, which is another 3.2 million, so 51 million altogether. And they show how much more that is than Game Pass, and how Nintendo Switch Online even has more subscribers with 32 million strong. Now, there's a major problem here with this piece of reporting. And I, I don't want to believe that it's on purpose, however, it also wouldn't surprise me. We're talking about a games journalist here. We're talking about journalists all together. And this is a um, field that has very little integrity and very little trust in it. So I cannot for sure say this person just was mistaken in their reporting or they were just doing this on purpose because it suited their narrative that as great as Game Pass might be, it still is dwarfed by this PlayStation service. So here's what they left out. Xbox Live Gold, or Xbox Network Gold, or whatever you want to call it now. Uh, the service, uh, PlayStation Plus, that he's talking about, and also the Nintendo Switch Online, these are the gateway services, the gateway subscriptions you pay for, to access online multiplayer features. And yeah, there's other little bonuses thrown in there as well, but that's what those are. So if anybody on PlayStation or anybody on Nintendo wants to play multiplayer games and use those features, they have to subscribe to PlayStation Plus or Nintendo Switch Online. That's not what Game Pass is. Game Pass is just a game download service. So of course it's not going to have as many subscribers as those. But you know what has as many subscribers as those combined? Xbox Live Gold. Which has somewhere between 90 and 100 million active subscriptions as of uh, the end of 2021. I mean, that, that dwarfs, that, that's more than both PlayStation Plus and Nintendo Switch Online combined. So there, there's this leaving out a important detail that tells the whole story here because if you stack up xbox live uh next to playstation plus nintendo switch online and of course these other uh online services it's a lot more active subscribers 
The Xbox Game Pass has about 25 million subscribers, which is quite a bit, um, but there's a major difference there. That is specifically a service for accessing um, downloadable games, uh, basically like a Netflix of games. And besides the fact that uh, you have like hundreds of games, you know, in this library and you have access to uh, all Xbox first party titles launch on their day and date, many other major titles launch on this service day and date and other great games will come along within a couple months or so as well. So it really is a great value and it, it's, I, I'm surprised more people don't use it. However, 25 million subscribers is a lot for something like this. and. That's not the service that gives you access to Xbox multiplayer like PlayStation Plus is. So this is a really comparing apples to oranges and um, on one side leaving out the oranges that would you know make sense, I guess. So like I said, I, I've always respected Dual Shockers. I've always felt like they're pretty fair in their reporting. I don't know if this guy is paid for his work or if he's an intern or whatever and I'm not trying to smear anybody. All I'm saying is man, if if you're going to report things like this, if you want to talk about like the the progress PlayStation is making with their PlayStation Plus and Now services and show how it stacks up to Game Pass or whatever, I don't know. If you want to do that, no one cares. I've got no issue with that. People play whatever console or use whatever service they do. But if you're going to leave out very simple, basic facts you know, and compare two different kinds of services to each other and use that as a way to say that one is somehow lagging behind the other, then you're, you're basically, you're reporting untruths, you know, and it's misleading to people and it's really not fair to anybody to have that kind of information because, yeah, when you look at the, the actual truth of it, the, the actual Xbox network subscriptions for multiplayer use, which is what PlayStation Plus is, like drastically um, beats out where PlayStation is or Nintendo combined. So anyways, that was all. I just wanted to comment on this. Like I said, not trying to uh, drag anybody or anything like that. I'm just saying like when you read an article like this and you go, where's your research? You know, do you have an editor? Because that, that's what's most disappointing. An editor had to look over this and go, yep, that sounds good. And this is why people don't trust games journalism or journalism in general.